how altars work. Let's hurry up. Now, pay attention. I want to show you a mystery. I want to show you how altars work. Ah, may God give us understanding. Let me tell you. You see this, our fathers of faith? The level of results they are commanding? Believe me, if you think it is just based on intellect, think again. You see this, our nation and Africa, the kind of trouble we are in, if you think it's just a political trouble, think again. Do you not see the consistency of the operations regardless what government comes? It is an altar, my dear people, more than just who is there or who is not there. Do you not see what happens to people during election? It's as if something just comes on people and nobody knows what he's doing until after everything, everybody starts complaining. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. How does altars work? How does an altar work? Please write this down. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. All satanic altars are powered by one major altar. And I want to reveal it to you now. All satanic altars, systems of authorization, systems of communication, right? They are powered by one major access point or one major altar. Now, forgive me to make reference to my dear film, Lord of the Rings, remember that our movie? Now, remember, if you've not watched it, I don't know what to tell you, but you just follow. God will grant you understanding. Remember, uh, I, I hope I understand the film really very well, but I know that there were many rings that were given to kings, and then there was one ring, is that true? That powers the remaining other rings. This is what I'm trying to teach you. That all other altars are at the mercy of this one altar that means no matter what you do to all other altars if this one altar still remain you wasted your time now this is the mistake that most people have that they just keep rebuking things individually poverty this one that one all satanic altars are powered by one major altar pay attention now is called the altar of sin and iniquity write it down please judges chapter 6 and verse 1 the altar of sin and iniquity this is the altar that powers every other satanic altar and the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord and the lord delivered them into the hands of midian seven years what was the cause of the problem evil in the sight of the lord the altar of sin and iniquity and hold on before you assume any self-righteousness i want to tell you there are different levels of sin there is your personal sin when it has to do with altars there are territorial sins and there are sins that come from bloodlines so don't be too quick to just stand with self-righteousness and say it does not concern me the the altar of sin and iniquity. Hosea chapter 7 and verse 1. I found this scripture and it blessed me so powerfully. Look up please. Let me, let, me, let me read it for you. When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered and the wickedness of Samaria. I was about to come and heal them, but there was something that was discovered. When I would have healed Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. Romans chapter 5, from verse 12 to 14. Romans chapter 5. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. Are we together now? Look how serious this issue of death is. And yet he's saying death had to wait for sin to enter to authorize it to come in. He says, so 
death, death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. We are reading to 14, 13 now. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. 14. Now, this scripture blessed me so much. Nevertheless, he said death reigned. It didn't just come. It now came and even reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression. Do you know what this means? This is, he's talking about us now. The effect of that original seed, it came and reigned even after them that had not sinned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him who is to come? The altar of sin and iniquity. John chapter 9 from verse 1 and 2. John chapter 9. The Bible says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Now hear what the disciples said, verse 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Are you seeing the disciples? They went straight to the issue that they believed would have been the cause. Remember, these guys had been under the mentorship of Jesus. This man's condition, there must be something that has authorized Satan. He said, who sinned? This man or his parents? There was something they had known about the teaching of Jesus. Some versions will say, who sinned? Him or his father? Because the word father means source. So is it him or his background? Both of them can create an effect in his life. Who sinned? I wrote down here, just for your quick learning, three levels of sin. With respect, with respect to the activity of altars. Three levels of sin. Number one, personal sin. Personal sin. First John chapter 1 and verse 8. Personal sin. Three levels of sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Period. The Bible states it very clearly, unmistakable there. Number two, territorial sin. Territorial sin. That means your personal sin, you can repent before God. But there is territorial sin. A territory can sin against God. An example, Sodom and Gomorrah, Genesis 18 from verse 21. Sodom and Gomorrah was not just a personal sin. He appears to Abraham, we are reading to 22, to, to 23. I will go down and see whether they have done all together according to the crime. In fact, let's start from 20. Let's start from 20. He says, the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin as a territory is very grievous, uh -huh, I will go down and see whether they have done together according to the cry of it, which is come to me. If not, I will know. Verse 22. It says, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet with the Lord. One last verse. And Abraham drew, drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous and the wicked? That means in that city there were righteous and wicked people. The righteous man being Lot. Yet as far as God was concerned, as a territory, they were sinners. Hmm. Statistics show sadly that Nigeria is ranked one of the highest among corrupt nations. Are you corrupt? But it's, it's a sad badge we have to wear, nationally speaking. Is that true? No matter how righteous you are, the whatever lash we have to receive by reason of carrying a Nigerian passport, we all corporately, no matter how individually righteous we are, 
you have to face that backlash until as a territory we are changed are you getting what i'm saying now sodom and gomorrah a territory can sin another example jonah chapter one nineveh nineveh jonah chapter one and verse three and then we'll go to chapter three from verse one to three jonah chapter one and verse jonah chapter one verse one now the word of the lord came to jonah the son of amittai saying we're reading to verse three arise go to nineveh that great city and cry against cry against what the city cry against the city for their wickedness is come up before me verse 3 uh, you know what happened to jonah jonah ran away and all the story that happened in disobedience and you know that jonah was angry because he said lord i know these people you are right if i talk to them now and they repent that means a territory can repent of their sins are we together chapter 3 and verse 1 now jonah came out of the belly of the fish verse 1 now 3 verse 1 and the word of the lord came to jonah the second time saying we're reading to verse 3 arise go to nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee that means what i told you go and tell them there is authorization from darkness to destroy you based on that altar of sin and iniquity and if you don't do anything about it judgment is coming what happened verse 3 so jonah arose and went on to nineveh according to the word of the lord it says now nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey later on we're going to be reading what happened because as soon as jonah announced that the bible says they declared a fast plus the animals everything that was alive fasted to repent if i stole money and i bought cassava with it and a goat eats it territorially we are all sinners so the animals fasted it's in your bible praise the lord so there's territorial sin the last level of sin is seen based on foundations and bloodlines please write it down don't worry don't be afraid of hearing all these words i know you've had them and you've run away from them for a long time you just trust me i'm a good pilot sin based on foundations and bloodlines don't forget these three levels of sin personal sin territorial sin and then sin that is based on foundation and bloodline psalms 11 and verse 3 it says if the foundation be destroyed what can the not what can men do even the righteous will be affected exodus chapter 34 from verse 6 exodus 34 and verse 6 watch this now and the lord passed before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth next verse keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty he says visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation uh-huh he says and moses made haste and bowed his head and worshiped next verse he says moses now if i have found grace we're reading to 14 in your sight O lord i pray thee go among us for it is a stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquity are you seeing moses repenting and asking the lord he said this one is not just for myself i i agree with what with what you have said verse 10 he says okay let's go to verse 9 watch this moses is pleading now on behalf of his people he says 
and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance how did god respond to that issue verse 10 please and he said behold i make a covenant before all thy people i will do marvels such as have not seen done in all the earth nor in any nation and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the lord for it is a terrible thing that i will do with thee reading to 14 verse 11 now quickly observe thou that observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I will drive out before thee the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. Uh -huh. Take heed to yourself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest. Let it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Verse 13. But ye shall destroy their... Is that in your Bible? I want to do business now that you are begging me now that you are pleading with me to have mercy let me show you what you need to do it's not just the issue of pleading there are things that will keep speaking you shall destroy their altars break their images and cut down their groves last verse for thou shalt worship no other god for the lord whose name is jealous wow I only used to read that he's a jealous God and he's saying the Lord whose name not negative satanic jealousy let's not confuse what is written here jealousy just means that ability to want to see that which you love protected and preserved that there is something about God when he sees that spiritual halotry from God to God and when sin and iniquity creates that altar we people bring judgment upon themselves personal sin territorial sin please look up whether you like it or not we are all victims of territorial sin and if not all of us especially africa bloodline foundations do you believe that you will hear of a story of somebody who buried human beings every day and then you just shrug it off and say it does not matter do you know what the people said before they passed on and you just believe oh no problem everything is gone no there are rules of engagement i've taught you this when we're dealing with deliverance that even the sin of man god did not cast it out of man as powerful as god is he didn't cast sin out of man the lamb had to come and die, lived 33 years, died to purchase redemption for us. Is someone